The Rancho Palos Verdes City Council has reorganized and Jerry Dehovic is now RPV's mayor and Jim Knight is mayor pro tem. The annual reorganization took place at the December 3rd council meeting. At the meeting, Susan Brooks stepped down as mayor and council members Anthony Mizetich and Brian Campbell were sworn into their second and last terms. Before stepping down, Brooks expressed her gratitude to the community and highlighted the year's past accomplishments. Brooks nominated Knight to serve as mayor pro tem and Knight nominated Dehovic to serve as mayor. It feels terrific. It uh, really is an honor and I do feel humbled and, and blessed to be representing the citizens of Rancho Palos Verdes. It, uh, it, uh, it's really a dream, to be quite honest with you. I'm looking forward to the upcoming year. Um, you know, as I said, it's a family affair for us. My wife and my daughters and a whole host of family and friends really relish in it today and it really is exciting. I appreciate the support from the council and uh, I look forward to working with Jerry. I work with him already on council for uh, several years and uh, he's a man of high integrity and I have great respect for him and uh, I think we're going to work well as a team to carry the city forward into the future. I'd really like to advance the city on multiple fronts. I'd like us to be a template and an example for other cities and we started doing that under former Mayor Brooks uh, with respect to certain transparency issues. That was uh, quite a bit of work that I was involved with and she was involved with and that's step one. So we'd really like to advance the city We'd like to be a beacon and show other cities how it's done. Um, you know, we'd also like to enhance our oversight capability. We have really two roles as council people. First is setting policy, uh, number one, and number two is oversight, which is uh, ensuring and letting our residents know that we're watching what's going on. And we're lucky we have a, a great staff, but that is part of our role and part of our duty, and we take that very seriously. Well, I want to continue with the safety for the citizens. Um, I want to continue to encourage the sheriff's department to reach out to the citizens. Um, I want to see if they can make a rounds to the homeowners associations and let them know the, how they're available to help them and uh, work with them. Uh, we have the San Ramon still to finish up, but we can make sure that goes through. It's going well now. We have to follow that through. And uh, we have quite a bit of infrastructure we have to take care of. And that's going to be a big issue next year is how in the long term we're going to take care of our infrastructure. That's It's going to be a huge financial uh, challenge, and uh, we're going to have to prioritize what we have to do. A very special dedication took place at the December 3rd council meeting. In her final act as mayor, Susan Brooks led a ceremony naming the multi-purpose room at Hess Park after the late John McTaggart. Earlier this year, the council voted unanimously to name the room the John C. McTaggart Memorial Hall and Council Chambers. It means a lot to my family. We have uh, asked for this for uh, since he's been pa passed, and it has been four years. And uh, it was a wonderful, uh, it's a wonderful tribute to him. And if anybody ever came by my home, you could see that my home is a museum for all that he did. In fact, he did so much that I, I wasn't even aware of until he passed. Because you know, you send him off to another meeting, and uh, it's just a, an exciting thing, but uh, I don't know whether it's fortunate or unfortunate the McTaggart name will be around forever. Just for my dad's memory alone, it's fantastic, but for my mother and for the family, it's especially wonderful, but we really wish he could be here <laughs> to see this. And my father gave a lot to the city and he got a lot. So it was a mutually beneficial relationship and we really miss him. And for the city to do this has been a tremendous boost to our family, for my mother especially, for the folks in the community that were in his age group and his peers. And so this is a really fantastic thing. And so we're very grateful, especially to the council and to the mayor. McTaggart's wife and family members said it was a fitting tribute to the man known as Mr. RPV. McTaggart was elected to the council in 1983 and was RPV's longest serving public official. 2013 was a year filled with many milestones and accomplishments in the city from the $20 million San Ramon Canyon project to the newly opened temporary dog park. On the art scene, the Palos Verdes Art Center reopened after major renovations and expanded its presence, opening up a new artist studio at the Promenade on the Peninsula. 
RPV TV was there for the ribbon cutting. To walk in and see it really is a first rate um, gallery space is, is very impressive. So hats off to the, the artist group, they've done an incredible job. You know, this is a group of passionate artists, they're committed to their art form. Uh, and they really are looking for a venue uh, to express that and share that with the broader community. It's a co-op gallery. We're affiliated with the Art Center, which is a great, great sponsor for us. We also have a shop in the, in the Art Center, and we'll be relocating actually within the Art Center to another location within the Art Center we're very excited about. And uh, it's just a great organization, great people, lots of fun to be part of the, part of the group. Coming up next, the holidays are a time for giving and shopping, and one of our local charities combined both of these things in their annual fundraiser. Hi, my name is Captain Andy Olvera with the Los Angeles County Fire Department, coming to you from Fire Station 106, located in Rolling Hills Estates. This is our 21st year in partnership with ABC7, collecting toys for the less fortunate children. Over the past 21 years, we've collected approximately 7 million toys to help out the less fortunate. And once again, we're asking for your help to provide an unwrapped toy or piece of sports equipment for the less fortunate children this year to help bring a little spark of, spark of joy into their Christmas season. So, from our firehouse to your home, we want to wish you a happy and safe holiday season. season is upon us and it's a time for giving. One local charity that continues to give back is the PV Juniors. The organization recently held its annual Winter Wonderland fundraiser at the PV Golf Club. I had the opportunity to attend this event which brought in thousands of dollars to help women and children in need. So today is our first fundraiser of the year. Uh, it's very exciting as you see around is Winter Wonderland. And we are basically having a boutique and we have some um, silent auction items. And of course, my personal favorite, the live auction. Yeah. PV Juniors has been um, on the hill since uh, 1958, and we support on average about 10 to 12 uh, philanthropies a uh, year. Those philanthropies are all in the South Bay. It's they, um, their main mission has to be to help women and children in crisis. So we, um, g we give money to them, they put in an application, we have a very um, diligent process to making sure that the charities that we're giving the money to are worthy and they're in need and they have very low overhead. We have just a wonderful group of women. These women have been working tirelessly, I am telling you, uh, for probably since May of last year, they started working on this event. What it boils down to is that people really come together and um, help and we have a committee and we have people that are um, designated certain jobs but um, at the end you know you show up and you're trying to set up and you're making sure that everything gets done and it's just amazing that it's kind of a force beyond yourself you're it's just all happens so we have a lot of different vendors I believe almost 13 vendors this year um, between jewelry some painters uh, pajama people I mean you know some gourmet oils and uh, be honey um, so we just there's a big variety tell us about the beautiful jewelry that you make I know that this is the first time that you're here at the PV juniors event yes I started out about 11 years ago when my oldest child was making his first Holy Communion and uh, I couldn't find a rosary for him I like the vintage style so I made it and that's how everything started and people started coming to me for rosaries and then a couple years later I started with the jewelry and um, and now I do actually everything. I have uh, Buddhist malas and uh, I'm branching out into all kinds of different religions and uh, pieces and everything is handmade, uh, collected from all over the world. The metals are hand cast, mostly in solid bronze or sterling silver 
And then the beads are from all over the place. The vendors all have a fee to participate and they all donate 20% of their sales. So it's really quite significant. They have the most amazing boutique here, and it, what's great about it is for last-minute gifts. Cheryl Brennan, who was the one that coordinated the boutique, is the best shopper I know. I've known her for years, and so she has gone to the source of a lot of designers who go straight to Nordstrom. We're not paying Nordstrom prices here. We're paying discount prices, but it's all for fundraising. And, you know, it, PV Juniors is a great organization that raises money for children and for mothers in the South Bay. So it's a local organization, and everything that's raised goes straight to about 12 different organizations locally. So it's great. Happy holidays. One of the charities supported by the PV Juniors is called the Los Angeles Challenge. LA Challenge was founded by Peninsula residents in 2002 to provide educational assistance to economically disadvantaged students. Liz Brown Swanson has more and joins us from the group's holiday party. Hi Maria, I'm at the annual holiday celebration for the Los Angeles Challenge. I'm at the beautiful home of Carolyn and Juliet Elliott. The Elliotts open their home every year to help raise money and awareness about the LA Challenge and the wonderful opportunities they provide for local students in need. We've been around since 2002 and we started it with no money and no kids with the sole purpose of trying to help some really motivated kids finish high school and go on to college. It's an organization where it's directly impacting students. Although I believe in public schools, I also know the pitfalls of public schools in inner cities. Those kids need a chance out. We monitor not only the students' success and uh, their motivation and their studies, but we also check on the schools that they are scholastically and academically high-powered schools. Right, we serve 34 students right now. Um, they're in 13 different schools. Uh, most of our children are um, middle school or high school. And we make such a difference. They come to us from public schools that were virtually failing and they were being bullied and you know, not getting a good education. Well, either one go to Fresno State, LMU is a big one, and San Diego State. So far they gave me a better education and I, I'm beginning to learn more and I really got to be the somebody instead of a nobody. My favorite subject is math and social studies. And even though you're just junior high, any thoughts of what you're going to do when you uh, become an adult? Yes, I want to become a doctor. It made a big difference because I am a single mother of three children, Christina being my oldest child. It made it very easy for me to put her into a private school because she'll be going to Dar Gardena Perry Middle Schools, worried about the peer pressure. She was worried about she, that's what she was her most worry was the peer pressure. These children in our program are exceptional, but they don't come from really exceptional experiences and they deserve this kind of opportunity. Now to find out more about the wonderful work done by the Los Angeles Challenge and all the students that they serve, you can go onto their website at losangeleschallenge.org. Back to you, Maria. One organization that works all year round to assist cancer patients and their loved ones is the cancer support community Redondo Beach. Recently, the group held a special event at Terranea and Liz Brown Swanson was there. Hi Marie, I'm here at the 9th Annual Fido and Friends Walk for Cancer hosted by the cancer support community Redondo Beach. This is the first time the event was held here at the beautiful trails of Terranea. As you can see behind me, we have dogs of every shape and size here with their owners all to raise awareness and hope for cancer patients and their loved ones. Cancer affects everybody and not just the person going through cancer, the people trying to help the people with cancer as well. And this group provided the support giver group, which is the group I was in. Initially, you know, I was just trying to support my wife, and then I'm going, I'm going through this too. Everything that we do at Cancer Support Community, we have over 150 programs a month, are completely free of charge. So everything we do today, all the funds raised, will go to our programs. Uh, about eight months ago, I was uh, diagnosed with cancer, sarnovial sarcoma, which 
started out as they thought was a little tiny fluid mass on my lung and they ended up finding a four pound tumor and then they found two more tumors on my brain which I've had removed. You found out about cancer support through through what happened to you. How are they helping? They're just an amazing group um, because they have all the information that once you're a cancer patient you are terrified. You know that's the worst thing I think anybody could ever said three words they could say is you've got cancer um, and the support group was right there with doctors for referrals, which are really important depending on the type of cancer you have. I have an extremely rare form, and they knew all the doctors that were the right doctors for what I needed. We have over 150 programs a month that we offer entirely free of charge. Everything from the core of our program, which is support groups, to mind-body exercise, doctor's lectures, and also nutrition lectures. Thank so. You. It's a comprehensive program and we're a complete resource destination for everything cancer patients need. Uh, it's incredible. Uh, both Whisper, who's 13 and a half years old, and four and a half years, o four and a half years ago came down with uh, cancer. Um, to save her life, uh, she had a hemipelvectomy, which is a radical amputation of a hind leg and half her pelvis and 20 days of radiation. And uh, she's had an incredible will to live. And uh, this year I came down with pancreatic cancer and uh, fortunately I'm surviving it. And she's been my inspiration every day since I came down with cancer. And so it's pretty special to be here today at this cancer event for uh, dogs and people. Talk about the dog walk today. You're excited. Yes, yes I am. And I heard, did you get this pug last year at this walk? Yes, yes I did. Well, we got Peg from an outfit called Pug Nation based in Gardena. They are terrific, and Peg is just a dream. And we're here to support cancer support community, and it's the first time we've had this at Terranea. We're so grateful for the hospitality that, Ter that Terranea has given us. Now, after the dogs and their owners took a one-mile hike down here to the grounds of Terranea, the festivities continue with dog contests and all kinds of fun things, but most of all, to raise thousands of dollars for cancer support community Redondo Beach. Back to you, Maria. And coming up next, it's all about the holiday spirit from a big tree lighting to a visit from the big man himself. Don't go away. Hi, my name is Captain Andy Olvera with the Los Angeles County Fire Department coming to you from Fire Station 106 located in Rolling Hills Estates. This is our 21st year in partnership with ABC7 collecting toys for the less fortunate children. Over the past 21 years we've collected approximately 7 million toys to help out the less fortunate and once again we're asking for your help to provide a, a unwrapped toy or piece of sports equipment for the less fortunate children this year to help bring a little spark of, spark of joy into their Christmas season. So. From our firehouse to your home, we want to wish you a happy and safe holiday season. The annual tree lighting at the Terranea Resort is an event that brings our community together and puts everyone in the holiday spirit. From delicious cookies to hot cocoa, it was a good time to be had by all, and Jessica McKay was there for all the fun. We're here at Terranea Resort for one of the most festive and fun events of the season, the Terranea Tree Lighting Ceremony. Let's go check it out. This is our fifth year, which is hard to believe. Our first one was in um, 09, so this is our fifth year, so we're delighted. It's fully complimentary for all of our guests. All the community can come with their children, and we have cookies and decorations for the children, and all of the performers donate their time. And so we're just so pleased that so many people have turned out. The first year it was our performers and their families, and now there's probably about 500 people here today. So, and most people are staying around and having a meal in one of our restaurants, just making it a festive night. Totally complimentary. This is a great opportunity for us to welcome friends, family, the community, everybody down, get everybody in the holiday spirit. So we just wanted kids to have fun, parents to enjoy, listen to the great performers and have a little bit of messy fun. 
We have a ton of different activities going on, um, starting with holiday activities every day. We have gingerbread house making, um, cuddly creations where they're going to get to stuff their own Captain Grey Whale. We also have a great um, story hour by the fire every day. And then, of course, everybody's getting excited for the big New Year's Eve parties. Uh, I made a, a gingerbread man with uh, two M&Ms on the ice, three, um, three chocolate chip, uh, three chocolate chips, uh, like on the, for the but the the buttons and two gummy bears, so I can like pretend that he's holding like two of them. And I put for his little feet, I put like two uh, uh, yellow and green M and M's. Well, we're here with Robert and Lucas Dottie. And Robert, I understand it's your first time here at the tree lighting ceremony. That is correct. This is the first time. It was a very nice little presentation. Did you have fun? I did. I think Lucas did also. Lucas, did you have fun? Oh, of course he did. He's grabbing your microphone. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, what did you enjoy the most, do you think? Well, the idea of just lighting the tree is really pretty. And, whoop, and then the singers were, they were good, especially that last uh, choral group. We really enjoyed that, didn't we, Lucas? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. And they had some wonderful refreshments, some cookies and beverages, warm bread beverages. Did you try any of those? Oh yes, yes. The cookies I enjoyed and the hot apple cider, although I had very little of it because I've been running after Lucas all evening, <laughs> who is now toddling and is loving to toddle, as well as to grab things. <laughs> right, little guy? <laughs> yeah. This is my second year. And you know it, it's such a wonderful atmosphere. And you know, before I got here, right before sunset, to be able to look out behind the sit stage and see Catalina Island, and it's just like I said, it, it, it's a wonderful facility here, and just really a pleasure to be here. We enjoy walking around, uh, having some coffee and tea, um, enjoying the sights, and then we also um, I'm also with the Amused Singers and we get to sing during the Christmas tree lighting. Well, it was a wonderful turnout as always. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about some of the performers you had with us tonight, singing those beautiful songs? Hi, happily. Uh, interestingly enough, everybody that was here tonight was with us last year as well, so that was really nice. Um, we started with the encore group, No Boys Allowed, and then we had a group from Coast Music Conservatory, who sang Hanukkah songs, which was great because we're in that sort of period where it's Christmas and Hanukkah. And then we had the Norris Times Square Kids, which is always good. They've been with us every year since we opened and they were really cute. Um, and then we had two groups from Amuse. We had Vocality, which was the teenage group, and then the final group, which was the 20 adults which was just gorgeous, I thought, and I love their parting line, happy everything. Yeah, happy, <laughs> happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, happy Christmas, happy everything. Why do you feel that you want to do this for the community? Oh, it's so important, and this is one of my favorite events of the year because it is entirely for the community. Although I did hear that, that to, this evening some people booked rooms to stay here, so it's truly becoming a tradition, and people are making a special effort to be here on this night. But the community has welcomed us and, and it's been such a part of our success that it's so good to be able to give back and to involve everybody and to give everybody a chance to perform here. You wouldn't believe how many people I have asked me if they can come. So it's a very exciting thing to do and we truly, truly feel that the community is so important to what we do here. It, it, it's, it's family and so it, it's a great family occasion tonight on so many levels. Well, we braved the cold and the payout was worth it. The tree is spectacular. We want to thank Terranea for hosting this festive and fun event. Back to you, Maria. And congratulations goes out to the Terranea Resort as they continue to receive top industry accolades. The resort recently ranked as one of the top three resorts in Southern California by Condé Nast Traveler in the annual 2013 Reader's Choice Awards. Terranea was also recognized as one of the top family hotels in the U.S. in Travel and Leisure's 2013 World's Best Awards. 
And finally, it would not be Christmas without an appearance from Santa himself. And while Santa is quite busy this time of year, he made time to come out for breakfast to support the REACH program. The REACH program, which is administered by the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, is designed to serve the social and recreational needs of young adults with developmental disabilities. John Clayton was on the scene, anxiously awaiting the big man himself. So here we are up at Hess Park and we're waiting for the arrival from the North Pole of Santa Claus. And any moment, Santa will be arriving on a fire truck. I'm not quite sure where his sleigh is, but you will see it all momentarily. See, we're standing by a sign called the REACH, so what, what exactly is that and what is the connection to this event here? It's a rec program for developmentally disabled young adults and we provide wonderful opportunities. We learn to cook, we learn to have fun, we learn how to get out in the community and just do community service. We do all kinds of fun things with the REACH program. Ho, 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 and Happy New Year to Rancho Palos Verdes. Merry Christmas. Is this the first time you've seen Santa Claus? Yeah. Were you excited? Yeah. My goodness, are you going to come next year? Yeah. What did you ask him for? A speed train. He said he will bring me it in Christmas. Whoa. Well, here we are talking to the man himself, Santa Claus. Tell me, I see you've been talking to a lot of kids. Uh, is that something that is uh, enjoyable? And if it is, what are some of the things that they tell you? I've been doing this for thousands of years and it never gets old. It's always fresh. The, the kids change, but they're always on the, most of them on the nice list and they are so cute and they're sweet and they love Santa and Santa loves children. and. The, the gifts change, sometimes it's Barbie, sometimes it's Transformers, Xboxes, bikes, but the kids are always just as sweet. And I see before you came down here, you've been eating very well. I mean, you, you've been having a wonderful time out there with all your elves. Mrs. Claus is a wonderful cook and I eat all year long and I never, I work one day a year, so I eat 364 days and work one. Everything is so clean. I mean, what about climbing down chimneys? You you don't get all that soot. Well, I'm clean now, but I have a good a good dry cleaner, the North Pole. So oh, you do. I have to. You have to. I yeah. see. And I see when you came here, you came in a fire truck. I mean, where where's Rangers and Rudolph and all that stuff? Well, they have to rest up. It's they have a busy, busy day. I just sit on a sleigh. They have to fly around the entire world. Seven billion people now. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. So they have to rest up for the big day. Well, thank you. That was an absolutely fascinating talk with Santa. You see the man himself. Well, thank you. If I can say one last thing. Ho, 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 and Happy New Year to Rancho Palos Verdes. Merry Christmas. I wonder if John Clayton made the naughty or nice list. Hmm. Well, for everyone here at RPV TV, we want to wish you a very happy and safe holiday.